There are many black bears living in and near Minakata Regional Park. In fact, there are up to 30 bears in a space that would normally be home to just one bear or less. To have 20 to 30 bears uh, using a small area like this indicates that there's a huge amount of resources here for bears, uh, not only in the park, but adjacent to the park. That means increased potential for bears to become dangerously habituated to humans. This home video was shot on the park's southern border. This bear appears to be completely unconcerned about the cyclists. As a parks organization, we need to mitigate any risk to public users of our park. And in order to do that, we need to understand when and where bears are doing whatever they're doing in the parks. To find answers to these questions, Metro Vancouver Regional Park staff and volunteers are conducting a bear monitoring study. We have about 12 wildlife cameras and 16 hair snags, and we were checking them to monitor black bear activity in the park. The wildlife cameras do reveal a lot of bears, as well as the other animals that live in Minakata Regional Park. There you go. Oh, nicely done. The 12 cameras are placed throughout the park and the photos are checked twice a month. The time-stamped photos, also called captures, contain vital information about the bear's preferred hangouts and typical behavior. Scroll through, and then whenever you see a bear, let me know. And I I'll... see a bear. Perfect. So last time we were here, we saw a mom come down here with her two cubs. They nursed for a bit, a couple hours passed by kind of watch the babies pass out. The cubs were kind of playing around. So you could really just kind of see them acting really natural, which is really nice. The group also checks the hair snags, which consist of barbed wires placed in strategic areas. Oh, great. There you go. There's some hair right there. The idea is that when the animals pass this, some of their hair is grabbed from them. We can then collect that hair and send it away for DNA analysis. And we can get results that identify it down to an individual level. Now we just have to burn any remnant hair off so that if we catch another snag on it, uh, we won't have the DNA uh, contaminated by the previous bear. Blueberry fields adjacent to the park attract local wildlife during July and August, including bears, leading to increased contact and conflict with humans on the road separating the park and the fields. If we determine that there are daily patterns of bear movements through the park, uh, for instance, if bears move through the park early in the morning to access their feeding area to the south. Um, we may delay opening the park and then open the park once the bears are, are no longer going to intercept people. The overall goal of the bear monitoring study is to gather enough information so both bears and humans can use the park safely. We'd like to document that if, if at all possible, determine the overall requirement for the bears and how we can manage for meeting those requirements in the long run.